Letty, well, good morning to you, colleague. Uh, perhaps give us a, a picture of, you know, the impact of water scarcity from where you stand in the province. Well, Dumelo, um, water rationing kicks start today in majority um, of Durban. Those places that are supplied by the Durban Heights Water Treatment Plant will be the most affected. And the municipality made this announcement on Friday where the mayor of Etegwini Mkolisi Kawunda announced that those areas will have water for majority of four hours a day. And the times that they're going to get water is between the morning and also in the evening. But of course, there are areas here in Durban that have been without water for about three months now because of the floods. The water infrastructure was damaged. And that one of those places is where we are right now, Hambanati. It's in the northern parts of Durban. Uh, most residents where we are have been complaining about the fact that they have not been supplied with water for, this, for the majority of, of the time that um, the floods have took place. And right now, I'm actually joined by resident I want to bring her in so she, she can share exactly um, how they've been affected. Siskuku, thank you so much for joining us at ENCA. Um, take us through your problems as residents. You've shared a lot with me off camera. Just share that with our viewers as well. Uh, as a resident from Hambanati, we've been crying and complaining about water. Uh, even our council uh, is aware of everything that is happening. The most important thing that we are crying about is that they, they are supplying water to us, but the problem is it's not the right way. They're not communicating with us. They're not telling us anything, whatever is happening. We even uh, spoke at a sports center that we need a uh, calendar to come at Hambanati so that they will talk to us and tell us everything. But Kaunda promised us that he will come here in one week's time. From that meeting was there in a uh, sports center, but he never came as yet. So we are like, we are like now, see it, it as it like we are neglected as Ihambanati because some areas here around Tonga, they, there is water. Most especially Indians, they do get water. Even that three hours time, it, it will make a change in our lives because now it's like we have to run up and down. Sometimes you have to stop whatever you're doing and wait for Vaterkan, of which it's not coming and nobody tells us why it's not coming every day. So that's the problem. And we can't like every day wait for Vaterkan while we we know that it's not coming, but other places they come each and every time. So for us, it's like painful that we are talking and we are crying for water, yet nobody is hearing us. Even the community now, it's so angry it, because we are even like wanting to go on the streets because we can see that everybody who goes in the streets, they get water back. So Tina, because we are not going on the streets, so nobody is taking care of us. Nobody cares about our, our, our frustration. Yeah. And Sissy, um, today water rationing starts um, in many places across Durban and you were sharing your concerns about that saying maybe now you will actually not even get those water cannons that come on a daily basis to supply water here in Hambanat. Yes, we are feeling that even like today, I don't even think that we'll get that water cans because now they have to concentrate with the other people that they've been having water. Now they will see them as if they are struggling. Meanwhile, we are struggling here because we don't even get that four hours. So we think now it's going to be more worse than ever. We thought it was worse, but now we think it's going to be more worse than ever. So we don't know what is the impact, infection, infection of them to do that. We don't know why. No, thank you so much, sis. Thank you, sir. So, Tumelo, that is U Sisko Kungube from Hambanat, basically just sharing that they feel as if um, they will be forgotten more by um, officials since this water rationing is going to be starting in majority of the places here in Durban. She is also sharing that um, their cries are falling on deaf ears because every time they go to officials, um, they don't get any answers. Meanwhile, those people that go out on the streets to protest, um, they get their cries is heard and they get supplied with water. She is saying though that um, for now they will continue just speaking to those officials and maybe um, they will have some answers soon.
Yeah, you know, and it just reminds me, Letty, where of uh, a, a time, I think a couple of weeks ago, when we were having this conversation again, and you actually showed some other residents uh, in Tonga who also had the same issue around not being, being heard enough. When they call or, you know, seek out assistance from municipalities, uh, there seems to be no response. It seems that is the ongoing concern raised by residents within the Kezirin area. But thank you so much to you, Letty Umduli, for bringing this uh, story to us and highlighting uh, the reality on the ground. Letty Julie out for us in KwaZulu-Natal.